So here we are at one of my favorite spots. I've painted variations of this many times, this scene. There's an orchard on the right that has uh, cherry and peach and apple trees that are in blossom right now. And then further back, some magnolia trees with different colored blossoms, some evergreens. And what I like about this time of year, especially this magical sort of two or three week window in spring is that each tree has its own individual character. You can make out distinct outlines. Uh, they have their own sort of color temperature, uh, depending on the rate at which they're growing in. Some are just first forming those, those, those springy green outlines. Uh, others are in blossom, others are evergreens and form these nice dark shapes. Uh, but anyway, a very differentiated landscape. Whereas in winter, this would be almost a wall of gray. And later, subsequently in summer, when everything's grown in, there is sort of an undifferentiated wall of green that doesn't necessarily read very well in painting. So I want to show today how I might take advantage of um, distinguishing some of those shapes, taking advantage of them, and um, enjoying the day. I'm putting on the drawing with burnt umber that's been rather terped down and applied with a bristle brush. I like this color because it's rather neutral and it won't pollute too much the colors that I subsequently put on top of it. I believe that drawing is the foundation of any representational image and it's an important and very rich subject. Here I'm being very gestural with these big billowing organic forms, but this is a step that I'd recommend generally taking your time on. I'm going to stake out a bit of area over here for the sky colors. I'm tinging them a little warmer for down by the horizon. Because I feel like there's, there's a fair about a fair amount of warmth in the sky here. I'm working on a tone panel, but it's pretty close to the, um, pretty close to the, as light as I can go. So everything that I put in the painting has to be the tone of the ground or just slightly darker. And so I'm putting in a reference of my some of my lightest lights, which I don't always do, but I feel like in this case, I just want to find out where my ceiling is, the ceiling past which I cannot go with paint. The value ceiling. And then I'm going to start off almost as if with watercolor and start to block in some of the middle tones, the middle tone mass being essentially the wall of trees. In front of me. Seems a little too luminous, perhaps. I'm going to scrub it in. I feel like I need a reference of that really vibrant pink. Which as much as I want to make very light in value, I realize it has to be darker than the sky. And I'm going to try and overshoot the color, really aim for the highest saturation I can achieve in paint uh, to get some of the light on that magnolia, because I feel like if I hold off too long and don't strike it in straight away, it's never going to quite get as, as vibrant as I want. What I'd like to do um, pretty early on is have some kind of value arrangement manifest on the mixing space where I have the lightest lights here. I reserve this area for the middle tones, the kind of luminous middle tones of the trees, um, and then have an area for sort of darker accents. So essentially have a, a value, a value scheme emerge going forward. Try and block in some of the shadow tones here. 
for this tree. I'm being very watercolory with it to start. I've sped this up into time-lapse mode in the interest of saving time, but I was careful to include my palette in the shot, and that is, again, to drive home the idea that I structure the palette as a value gradient, where I've reserved the left-hand portion for the lighter colors, uh, the middle portion of the palette for a variety of rich middle tones, and then the right-hand side of the palette for darker accents. In this one, I've really watered down the paint more than I usually do with uh, Turpinoid. And that allows me to cover quickly, but also allows me to use the white of the panel to show through and provide the light from behind. At this point, I have covered everything. And you'll notice that I cleaned off the mixing space because I'd run out of space to mix. Here, I'm starting to block in with more opaque colors I feel that now that I've seen my first pass, my first assessment of all the portions of the picture, I can now start to make revisions as I see things more clearly. Here, it's involving richening up color, primarily pushing the darker registers and striking in some harder edge shapes, such as the cast shadows from the trees. So I'm just continuing to elaborate being mindful of now some mark making, but essentially reassessing shapes, dropping more nuance within areas that were too abbreviated, that were just mere masses before. And here I'm trying to capture the indiv individual flavor of some of these individual trees that have very different contours, growth patterns, textures. I always have to remind myself that plein air work is more like a visual poem than a technical essay. And so at this point, I've left it alone, perhaps to return for a second sitting, but I hope this has been of use showing some of my process.